Hey guys, Sen here. Today we're going to be taking a look at the raid card, which is a troop that has really been growing on me in these past couple of months. I used to think that after their nerf near the launch of Clan Capital, where they got that delay on their first attack, a 0.6 second delay instead of an instant first hit, that the troop was really terrible. But I've given them a try lately and they have not disappointed, and today we're going to cover all the different ways that you can use them to succeed in your raid weekends. So the raid car is a really bulky ranged unit and so it does really well against everything except those point defenses in the base. So those cannons, those spear throwers, those multi cannons, everything else like those big splash defenses, especially air defenses and crushers that can't even shoot back at them, those raid carts are going to be easily able to push through those. So ideally you're going to use this strategy against a base with a very open layout you can see the defenses are spread super thinly across the base, so there's not too much defenses covering one section of the base, and so the raid cards can pick them off one by one, and also sections like this where there's a ton of air defenses and a lot of value for your raid cards to pick off for free, basically. And so from there, it's a matter of learning how you're going to tank for them, which is the other major factor of this attack. And you're going to bring a few giants, a bunch of rams, a few barbarians, and I usually will go with three raid cards and you're going to see how we use them against this base. We want to grab all these air defenses down here, so we're going to start off with some rams to open up the walls down there, and those ram barbarians as well as the raid card barbarians are going to tank those first few defenses, and so our raid card can snipe those first few point defenses down. And as they push through, I'll start dropping our giants one by one. You don't want to drop all your tanks at once because then you're not going to get the most value out of them. You don't want them to all get splashed down. They're not there to deal damage. They're only there to distract the defenses. So just make sure you distract all the defenses that you can so your raid cards are going to be as healthy as possible. And also, because we want our raid cards to continue moving along this section of the base, we also want to funnel the right side over there. And so I noticed that there's no splash defenses as long as I tank this multi-cannon with our giants and raid cards. And so I can sneak in some Larry Barrels up the right side, funnel my raid cards up the gut through here, and also another strength to the raid cards is that they don't always need spells. You can see that there's not many defenses firing at my raid cards at once. I'm always using those ramps to open up walls, tank for the raid cards, as well as using those giants to distract the remaining defenses for the raid cards. And so they're all still alive and pushing their way through. I still have a couple more troops left. I'm just trickling them in as I see fit. That's another thing with the strategy. You have to do a lot on the fly. You have to adapt and see where the defenses are targeting, where your raid cards are going, and what defenses you're going to have to distract and how. So it does take a little bit of practice, but look at how far my troops have pushed. And I still have a heal spell and frost spell down in the troop bar. And if you've been sticking around in this channel for a long time, you know where those are going. I'm actually not gonna use any of them. I'm going to try to swag all my spells over the course of two attacks. But you can see, I just used those giants and those rams to tank for those raid cards, and they pushed through over half of the base on the first attack, and it's just a matter of technique to finish off the base from here. Now, once again, this section doesn't have too many ground targeting defenses and a bunch of air defenses, but if I'm able to sneak in hogs into that Blasco dead zone, they won't get shot at all, so in this case, the hogs are a little better than the raid cart. And then I work up the right side of the base with some archers and a ram to open up the wall, and I want them to clear the other air defense over there. Once that blast bow goes down, my hogs are still alive. They're going to take out a spear thrower and take out this rapid rocket before the giant cannon shoots at them. And once this air defense goes down as well, it'll take me another pack of archers because they actually got in range of the giant cannon, unfortunately. They took a bad angle, but we had that extra pack of archers, and now we're sending a barbarian and a pack of minions to finish off that spear thrower. And because we got so many air defenses on that first attack with those raid carts, it's a matter of finishing off the base with those, I think I had 10 packs of rocket balloons and there was like five air defenses. I still have three more packs and there's just this one back end mega hidden Tesla that I'm just going to full send all of my remaining rocket balloons towards and this base is going to get crushed and you can see I swagged every single spell achieving the full Hexodia against this builder's workshop. This is the power of the strategy. They don't need any spells and they can get so much value for you. So once again, we have another super open builder's workshop layout and this time I decide that I wanna push up this right side of the base instead of this bottom left side of the base. You can see there's a lot more defenses over here, they're a lot more concentrated, and there's also a lot of trash buildings that you're going to have to work through. Whereas on the right side of the base, 
the defenses are more spread out, my Canine cards are going to have a much better time trying to pick them off one at a time. And also, there's just better pathing up there instead of the bottom left side of the base. The Space Builder also has a good chunk of its defenses concentrated on its corners, the top uh, right corner over here as well as the bottom corner over there. And so we're going to be more responsible with our spells this time, using them on our troops and not on the river. We're going to start off with a couple of rands, try to test for any traps. We pull a ton of traps. I think we pulled two log traps, a zap trap, and a giant bomb. And then afterwards, we're going to push our cannon cards another zap trap into this section with the help of the rage spell. I prefer using a rage spell over a heal spell if you're going to use a spell on your cannon carts. The rage spell sort of also functions as a heal spell. You just kill the defenses before the defenses can kill you, if that makes sense. And so under that rage spell, those cannon carts go burr, blast down that entire section of the base. Now finish off that giant cannon. Now this Tesla pops. And that sort of ruins my day because I was originally going to send in a Larry Barrel on top of this Blast Blade Dead Zone, away from any splash defenses, and pick that off. But unfortunately, that Mega Hint Tesla has different plans for me. It's going to cost me my other Larry Barrel that I was planning to send up here over here to tank those other defenses. So the Larrys are really good at tanking uh, point defenses as long as you can protect them from splash. But as you can see, that Blast Bow is going to gun down all my Larrys at once. You really do have to protect them if you are going to use them, and so we're just going to have to use the remaining giants as a way to cover for the Larry's downfall. And now my great cards are just going to push their way through. There's one more giant cannon and a couple more uh, ground towering defenses. We have a few more rams, and those rams are so great at tanking those defenses for uh, the cannon carts, as well as testing for traps. That one even pulls a zap trap in front of the giant cannon. And we still have a whole three of our raid cards still alive, if I am correct. So they're going to work through that giant cannon. They're going to take out that crusher afterwards. We still have one more ram going ahead. And it's going to tank that last little cannon for me. And those raid cards are easily going to finish off that last cannon over there. And we will have a heal spell left. And once again, we're not going to drop that on the river. We're going to use that on top of the defenses to set up for our hog attack on the second attack. I was either planning to use that on my cannon carts if I felt that they would get a lot more value out of the heal, but you can see they ran out of tanking and that heal is not going to keep them alive to get very much more. And so I'm just going to use that heal spell where I see fit, probably over this crusher here because that is a pretty obvious place where I'm going to need a heal. And then the other two heals I'm going to bring with my hogs on the second attack, I can just drop them on the fly where I see fit. I'll have a P.E.K.K.A. to push through this giant cannon over here. I'll send in my hogs to pick off the blast bow and try to make sure I don't send them all clumped up towards this backside giant cannon over here. Just make sure we deal with all the sections most efficiently. Uh, P.E.K.K.A. to take out this giant cannon, Skelly Bear on the left side to take out all those point defenses, and then just send in those hogs into that blast bow dead zone and try to send in some more hogs to go up the left side into this giant cannon over here. We also have two heals, like I said. We have a ton of heals for our hogs. That is another strength of having more uh, spells capacity left. You can use those to set up a second attack. And we're just going to try to stun as many defenses as we can. We have so many hogs. We're even going to use that last heal even though we probably don't need it because we're in a viewer clan right now. We're trying to be more responsible. They're on the leaderboard right now. And so we don't want to mess up with their leaderboard position by trying to use our spells in an irresponsible fashion. We're going to use them to keep as many hogs as we can alive. Get that bonus gold, which does actually matter if you're trying to rise in the leaderboard. And so we have a ton of hogs left and they're going to work through those last couple of buildings. And the last use that I have found for the raid car is not a troop that you want to build your entire army around, but rather a troop that you use to support your army as a one of or a two of when you find the right spot in a base for it. So if we look at this base, you can see this barbarian camp looks super weird. It's sort of like a crescent shape with all its defenses and its walls, but it's also focused all of its defenses pointing towards the bottom right section of the base. So much DPS is over there. And so that's a super awkward way to try to enter the base. Ideally, if we could drop troops anywhere we could on the map, then we would drop troops on the top left and try to flank all the way around and hit these two rocket artilleries from this district hall over here where we can drop one rage and cover those two rocket artilleries and a bunch of air defenses nearby. Remember, this is a barbarian camp. We ideally want to finish off with rocket balloons or an air attack. And so we're going to start off and try to push up the top uh, left side of the base. In order to do so, we're going to have to clear this spear thrower and these bomb towers and maybe a couple other defenses that are going to stop us from deploying troops up there. 
and the way we do that is use that cannon cart after we clear some trash and that cannon cart can 1v1 that spear thrower take it down and after that spear thrower goes down there are no other point defenses shooting in this direction there's just those two bomb towers and that multi-mortar and those are low uh, damage defenses and our raid cart has a bunch of bulk on its own it also has that final form so the moment it locks onto one more defense it's going to take that out even if it dies before it takes it down and so it's going to finish off that air defense and we just have to finish off that last multi-mortar so we can deploy troops up the left side of the base. We wait for that final form to go down before we drop one more pack of archers so that multi-mortar doesn't shoot us down. And after that multi-mortar goes down, you can see we can start using some barbs to clear all those trash buildings. We're also going to bring a wizard bomb on this district call. It's going to get a bunch of chain value on a bunch of structures nearby, and so that's going to be super worth it. We just need to clear some of those defenses on the flank with our archers that we're going to fast forward by two or by four, whatever the case, then we use some rams to tank, some wizards in behind once those barbarians and those rams are distracting all of those rock artilleries nearby. And so those wizards are going to finish off all those defenses and get a ton of damage on that district call. That one rocket shell and a couple of other multi-mortar shells, I think, did a number on those wizards. And so they weren't able to finish off that district call. That's not a problem. We're easily able to pick that off with a couple more packs of archers. And we will fast forward from here as we try to take off as, as much of those defenses left on the base as we can and we only have four more packs of archers so we're not going to get too much farther i think we even leave up one of those rock artilleries but because we were able to enter that base from such a great angle the defender was not had not made this base to defend that entry and so we were able to get way too much air value and this is going to be an easy cleanup job one more rage so we can push in a couple more packs of archers to finish off that rock artillery and maybe even this backside air bombs. But afterwards, we'll just have a bunch of rocket balloons to easily finish off this base. And I'll just show you uh, the rocket balloon technique that I sort of use when a lot of the air defenses are super spread out along the base. You sort of use a home village deployment where you make sure your rocket balloons move through the base at once and you just reinforce. So we start on this bottom section over here. We pick off those two spear throwers and that air defense. Now my loons converge and so they're going to work their way backwards actually towards that multi-cannon. But then they're going to move towards the spear thrower and once they get in range of the air defense, we just keep reinforcing, keep reinforcing. We'll just times two through here. You probably have seen this all before on other channels who cover home village attacking. But this deployment is just really good at making sure you have a big clump of balloons pushing through the back side of the base. We also don't want them to get shot by this air bomb, so we have to make sure that we tank for that air bombs with some more packs of balloons before the rest of the big pack gets over there. And we have a bunch of balloons left over and we are swarming through the back side of the base. So this is the cannon cart guide. It's been really good for me as of late. You scout the base, you can figure out what kinds of value you're going to get out of the cannon carts. And you don't really need any spells for them as long as you pick, up, pick out the right base and they can just get you so much value. Alright, I hope you guys all enjoyed today's attacks. Also, make sure you join the Discord if you still haven't already. It's the best place to learn and talk about the clan capital. But like and subscribe if you enjoyed today's video and take care.